um, the manger and the child and the star shining and the shepherds and the wise men. And we put flowers around it and we put candles in front of it. And, you know, my gosh, by the time you get through it all, you, you, you can't hardly see Jesus for all the Christmas stuff in a way. And oftentimes we forget about it. We have our little plays and our children sing and a little puffy sheep that's always running around the stage. And all that's wonderful. But I wonder if we really ever think and consider as we, we look at this child in the manger of why that child came in the first place. I think it's because God said, come, let us reason together. Let's talk about a problem, a problem that you have that either you're not aware of or you're refusing to acknowledge. But rather than stay in the state of sinfulness, corruption, let's reason together and see if we can't do something about it. This child came to, to do just that. You know, years ago I knew a teacher in my former denomination uh, who was in one of the day schools there at, at the church. And uh, she did an interesting experiment with her kids. You know what she made them do? She went and bought a, a big old bag of these, those little baby potatoes. You ever seen them things like that? Those little tiny things? Like one bite. Well, she gave each child about 10 or 12 potatoes. And they had to write anything bad they had done on the potato with a marker. So they wrote, you know, I took, beat up my brother, or I took my, you know, mom's quarter or whatever. And they put their, basically their sins, their potatoes, in a plastic Ziploc bag. And they were told that they had to carry this bag with them for the whole month of December up till Christmas Day, from, from December 1st to December 25th. Now, you're talking about a bunch of fifth graders. <laughs> And, you know, fifth graders are tough on things sometimes. And, and over, the, over the week or two, you know, the potatoes started getting mashed. They had to take them out to PE with them. They had to take them to lunch with them. They had to carry them everywhere. Take, take them home at night, bring them back in the morning. And they had to carry these. Well, pretty soon the, the potatoes were looking pretty bad in there. And they were getting mashed and kind of ugly. And, and, of course, the boys, they're sitting there going boom, 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 mashing them all up anyway because they're boys. That's what they do and you know then they would mash the girls potatoes and the girls would go, ah, scream at each other because they got their potatoes mushed so you ended up with this class of fifth graders carrying around a bag of smushed up nasty potatoes now the one thing you did not want to do was open that bag because by this time <laughs> yay that's rich so anyway they did this now finally about a week before Christmas or three days before Christmas, I started getting a lot of complaints from parents why their kids had to carry around this bag of garbage, which was stinking up everything, and they were fussing about it, fussing about it. And I said, listen, the teacher's trying to teach them a lesson that, you know, if you, if you, if you have sin and you leave it unchecked, it just gets worse and worse and worse, and pretty soon makes everything just stink. And she's going to do a wonderful thing on Christmas Eve, the day of Christmas Eve at school, where they're all going to come and they're going to lay their bags at the altar and they will be free from that burden for forever. They will never have to carry around a bag of stinky potatoes. And I thought, wow, that's kind of a neat thing. A little risky nowadays. You know, I'm going to sue you. I'll get Dan Newland. He'll win me 500,000 potatoes. But it was a brilliant lesson. It was a brilliant lesson on how sometimes we don't see ourselves as the people we might be. And sometimes it's in that realization when this child comes, when that miracle happens, that we do see ourselves. George MacDonald called it righteous guilt as a gift of the child Christ. When the purity of the light shines within us, and the darkness is exposed and we feel bad about that darkness. He calls that a righteous or a divine guilt. 
whereby we now have an opportunity. We can either do something about it or neglect it and go on with our lives, carry off our bag of rotten potatoes and keep it with us. It's a very interesting perspective of this child Christ when you ask, well, why did he come in the first place? He had been foretold, he had been announced thousand years they were waiting for him, and he finally shows up. The light shines in the darkness, and at first, the people didn't understand it. John tells us in his gospel, the light came, everybody was, who look, magi, stars, donkeys. They missed the coming of the child Christ. But as the child Christ abide with them and began to minister to them, they become aware of why he's there. And men preferred the darkness. I'll just take my mashed bag of potatoes and go. And he comes and he works this grand miracle for everyone along the, the, the lake to see. Wonderful miracle, two full boatloads of fish. They get to shore and the head of the group, the CEO of Israel Fish Anonym, Anonymous or whatever says, depart from me. For I'm a sinful man. Have you ever asked yourself why Peter would respond like that. How many of you would respond like that? I wouldn't. I'd see the mortgage payment there. I'd see that new car, that new boat I was going to buy. Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. This is what George MacDonald, in his book, Gifts of the Child Christ, we know what we gave him but what does He give us? Well, when that light shines in our darkness, He gives us an opportunity to see ourselves for who we are. But I feel guilty. How many times over 40 years of ministry have I heard, oh, I can't go to church. If you only, God only knew what I've done. He knows. He knows all about your bag of potatoes. He'd like to take that from you. You know, Philip Yancey, I love him. He's a, he's a wonderful author. If you've never read any of his works, his greatest is probably what's so amazing about grace. Um, brilliant author, brilliant author. And he writes a lot like I preach. He tells story. Stories of events that have happened in his life, things that he's experienced. And one of the greatest experiences he writes about that he, he personally was a part of was he got to work in a, a leper colony. For almost a year, he worked with a very uh, powerful missionary, a very beautiful uh, uh, medical missionary, a doctor. And he writes and he says that for years, uh, I mean for a year, I watched people suffer. And I realized one unique almost common experience amongst all people with leprosy is they lose the ability as the disease spreads they lose the ability to feel pain and the disease often spreads into new areas and starts taking control of these areas because they can't feel pain they don't know what's spreading in there kind of like cancer can be sometimes where you go for years and years and years and there's no symptomology, or at least nothing you can feel. And he likened that unto guilt when we stand before the light. When the light shines into us, and we see ourselves for who we are, we have an opportunity, but if we can't feel it, then our lives continue to die and to perish. It's kind of like a divine guilt. Guilt is a good thing. Guilt is to the soul what pain is to the body. Nobody likes pain, but when you have a hurt finger, you, if you have half a brain, you ask yourself, why is my finger hurting? And you go and you find other men, skilled physicians, and say, well, you've got an arthritis there that's we can tend to that, or a busted tendon, or a hurt this, or a hurt that. 
Pain is not necessarily a bad thing is what Philip Yancey is trying to say. It alerts you to the fact that something's wrong. And you know what? It grants you an opportunity. Well, guilt is the same way. This is why George MacDonald calls it a divine guilt. It's a wonderful and grand gift that the child Christ gives us when the light shines in the darkness. Oh, if God only knew what I've done, He knows. He just wishes you'd let go of that bag of rotten potatoes. How many of us has ever, ever considered this little baby in the manger in this way? Now maybe we have a clue, maybe a glimpse of how and why Peter responded like he did. Maybe the miracle of the great catch of fish did impact him. Maybe the light did shine in the darkness and his only was, response was, Lord, if you only knew, I'm not worthy. And the opportunity he had, he says, depart from me. See, it's not so crazy a response as you might think it is. It was the human soul responding to the call of God. Wow. And that child Christ, as promised, showed up and said, Peter, let's reason together. I will make you a fisher of men. Wow, you will be one of my best, most fruitious agents for the kingdom of God. Give me those potatoes. See, guilt can point us to God if we see it as a divine guilt, if we see it as an opportunity. Jesus looked at his men and said, I'm going to tell you something, boys. There is no sin I can't forgive. There is no potato I can't get rid of. Except one, and that is when you won't give me the potatoes. Wow. How many of us looks at the Christ like that? When the light shines in the darkness and the men would rather the light go away and preferred their darkness. Oh, I don't go to that church, all that religious nonsense. 1965, Gallup Poll did a survey. This is incredible. Survey of 52,000 people they surveyed. That's a pretty big survey. In 1965, 75% of those interviewed felt guilt over wrongdoings in their life. 75% felt guilt over wrongdoings. I guess 25% were holy or something. But most of you were nasty. They all had bags of rotten potatoes. They did this same poll again 50 years later, 2015. 2015, 19.2% felt guilt over wrongdoing in their lives. 19.2% said, yeah, I might have done something bad. 50 years later, well, I guess the Leave it to Beaver era is over. We now live amongst men that prefer the darkness. We have raised two generations without conscience, without concern. They are, we, the, the psychologists say they are desensitized. And Peter experienced the greatest blessing he'd ever seen in his life. And his response was, depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. Oh, Peter. Come, let us, let us reason together. I am going to wash you so clean, you're going to be charming shiny. I saw that on a commercial. 
I don't know what it means. But I'm going to wash you so clean. I'm going to make you a fisher of men. You are going to bring the wicked, the dark, the dying, the suffering, all to a new place of life, just like you are today. Come, let us reason together. How many of us look to the manger and that little plastic Jesus and consider the gift he gives us? The first thing in John's gospel is the light shone in the darkness. The darkness didn't understand it. Of course not. They were looking at the shepherds and the donkeys and the wise guys and the star and the choir kid and the little drummer boy and, you know, Rudolph whipping around up there somewhere. They didn't see the child Christ. They certainly didn't see the purpose or the reason of his coming. Divine guilt. What a God-given gift. A personal awareness upon which our decision will determine eternity. That's a gift. As uncomfortable as it may seem, that's a gift. As pain is to the body to let you know we got to do something. Guilt is to the soul. To let you know we got to do something. Drop the spuds. Nikos Kazanzakis. Nikos, I got into the Greek thing this week, by the way. Aren't you blessed? <laughs> Excuse me. Niko Kazanzakis writes a little piece that I had to go online, look up, and read called Letters to Greco, or Grandpa Greco. Letters to Greco. It speaks of an old man who's dying. His body is sick, it's broken, it's withering away. And he's crying in his bed by himself alone for all of the wrongdoing of his life. And he's literally weeping and, 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 and it talks about how the pillows and the, the blankets, the, the linens were being drenched in the tears of a guilty man, of a, of, of a, of a hurting soul. And it, it, he finds himself helpless in this situation as life is slowly ebbing away. And for the first time maybe in his whole life, he feels who he really is, or sees, experiences who he really is. And he has, he's lost, he's hopeless. And even with his last tear as he closes his eyes and dies, he's saddened by the reality of who he was. He opens his eyes to find himself being bathed by Jesus who's on his hands and his knees with a basin of water and a small towel and he's washing the old man inch by inch cleaning all the filth away from him and as he washes the old wrinkled dead nasty dying skin is becoming new again almost like a child's. And he starts and he works all the way down even to his feet and between his toes. Jesus washes and washes and washes. And then suddenly as you pan back to the bed and the, the lap of Christ, here's this child again. Brand new in bed. And he tells the child, go now into the house of your father and play. And the child says, but I'm I'm dirty. Jesus says, no more. Go now into the house of your father and play. Beautiful little work called Letters to Greco by Nikos Kazakzakis. 
You have to be able to pronounce that name if you go to heaven. But a beautiful image of a restored child, perfect in every way. Go now into the house of your father and play. But my sins, my dirt, come now, let us reason together, shall we? Though your sins be as scarlet, this child will make them as white as snow. Though they be as red as crimson, this child will make them as soft and as white as the purest new wool. Come, let us reason together. What a promise to a defeated, destroyed nation with no hope, fully aware of their guilt and their sin. If you consent and obey, you will eat again of the best of the land. But if you refuse and turn away, you will be devoured by your own sword. Truly the mouth of the Lord has spoken. And there as the light shone and danced around him, Peter said, Depart from me. I am a sinful man. No, no, no. Jesus did not let him go. Come, let us reason together. That's one of the gifts of the child Christ. A blessed gift. A divine guilt. A little twinge of pain in the soul to say, let's do something about this. That's how we start to Jerusalem. That's how we start to Bethlehem. That's how we start to come before the Father and the child Christ. Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, I thank you for this morning and for helping us put some scriptures together and make sense of these things. Yes, you have plenty of hopeful teaching, but then the application is, is weary. So help us to understand what this child Christ has brought to each of us and why he brought it. And let us respond, not like Peter, but let us respond, please, Lord, take away my sins that I might go into the Father's house and play. Thank you, Father, for such a beautiful gift of Christmas through the child Christ. In his holy name we pray. Amen. <clears throat>